And now I'm uh, very happy to introduce uh, Professor Yaniva Saf to talk about microstructural uh, MRI of the aging brain, please. Right, thank you everybody and thank you for staying with us uh, after lunch. And uh, I would like to speak today about the Brain Connectome and Aging, which is a joint project, uh, Birax project, uh, between my lab and the lab of Professor Heidi Johansenberg uh, from the Wellcome Center for Integrative Neuroimaging at Oxford University. We'll just wait for the presentation to come up. Right, so this is Heidi, which couldn't be with us today. Uh, I would like to start Oh, it will do it like this, that's fine. So I would like to start uh, every, every year at March, there is the Brain Awareness Week uh, around the world where neuroscientists goes out to the community and, and disseminate the research uh, activities uh, uh, to the community. Uh, at 2016, I've just finished uh, writing up a book about, uh, about the brain for, for young children. And I went to kindergartens and school uh, to, to promote it in a way. Um, so here I went to the school of my kids and here we can see some, some photos out of it. It was very, I bought a, a small brain uh, to show them. It was very, very dramatic uh, for them. And I showed them parts of our research. Uh, in our lab we are doing a research uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, brain plasticity, how the brain just changes through cognitive uh, experience. One of the studies was uh, to show uh, brain plasticity, structural plasticity after playing a computer game. And I showed it to the kids, and there is a cons conversation that I had with one of the kids uh, uh, following the lecture. So I said, playing computer games helps to increase connections in your brain. It's good for you to tell your parents in a very naive way. Then 11, 11 years old kid said, increase the connection. What does it mean? Won't the brain explode at some times if you increase more and more connections to the brain? which is true, isn't it? And I didn't have a straight answer to give him. So whenever you don't know what to say for a kid, the obvious answer is, well, it's complicated, right? It's complicated, let, let the adults uh, try to solve it. And it is complicated. And, and no matter how wonderful the brain, a biological machine is, it still needs to follow the, the basic laws of physics until anyone will prove otherwise. And one of them is the conservation of mass, right? We have, we have a box and the box is closed and there's a matter inside it. You can't increase and increase and increase the matter. Uh, uh, eventually something needs, needs to move away, right? But it's not only the mass, it's also the energy that comes in. So the brain is also an energetic machine. There is amount of energy that flows into the brain and it has to rely on that in order to create its structure, eventually its function, its function and, and its behavior. And to put it in the perspective of aging, we do know that these two factors do change with age. So the cerebral weight increases until adulthood or, or slightly after that and start to decrease afterwards. In terms of energy, if we measure mitochondrial function, we'll see that it peaks around, uh, around or after puberty and then starts to decline. So if with these two factors, the brain has to conserve its functioning. And obviously when you remove mass, when you remove some of the energy, it will function less efficiently, to say the least, with aging. And it's not something that we've invented now, it's already uh, Santiago Ramon y Cajal said, not in relation to aging per se, but he said that when once we realize that all various con conformation of the neuron and its various com components are simply morphological adaptation governed by the laws of converse conservation for time, space, and material. And specifically, I would like to highlight time, because through aging, we want to conserve or maintain our abilities. If we lose material, uh, obviously we won't be able to do so. So we need to conserve that. We need to conserve brain mass. We need to conserve brain energy. We need to conserve brain 
connectivity. So the hypothesis or, or the, the goal of the project that, that we are doing is that the brain imaging as, as a method can provide better understanding of the aging process or the brain aging process in that sense in uh, its interaction, especially with well-being and other individual factors. And why is that? Uh, so this is the first picture I want to show you. So this is an analysis that we have done on, on, on over 100 subjects, age between 21 and 92. And the red areas show very strong correlation with age. And in this area, we lose material. We lose, we lose connectivity. We, we lose gray matter in, in that sense. And, and, and probably function is lost in this area. And those are widespread across the brain, mainly in frontal regions, but on also in medial. Uh, temporal lobe where the hippocampus is, is suited and, and affects our memory abilities. And if we want to, now to try and understand that and see how we can stop that or, 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 or foresee or predict what is going on, we need to come to, to, to put it in some kind of formula. So if we want to give a very general formula for aging, obviously it will be a function of genetics. Genetics affects our, our, the ability of our brain uh, to age. We have no control of that so far. It will be a function of heredity in a sense. Also, we have no control of that. It will be a function of the environment. A brain and environment goes hand in hand. So obviously the environment, we can affect that. If we are living, living in, a very, uh, uh, in, a, in an area with poor conditions, obviously our, age will will our brain will accelerate its aging as well. So we can, we can control that. Uh, not all of that. So we have some minimal, minimal control on, on where we are living. And then the, at the end, there are, there are the life habits or our well-being. And this is something we, we can control, but we need the guidance of scientists and researchers in order to tell us what we need to do in our lives in order to affect aging through well-being. And there are some recommendations uh, uh, that comes out every now and then in the popular med media. Eat healthy, right? That, that of often comes up. Uh, don't eat fat. Recently, eat good fat. So don't eat fat, but eat good fat. So we need to define what is good fat. Don't, don't eat carbohydrates, as, as, as was mentioned before. Don't drink alcohol. Then they say drinking alcohol moderately may help you uh, with aging. Don't smoke. Don't use cannabis. Cannabis is a good, is a good factor for, for the elderly. Solve puzzles, solve Sudoku, do sports, don't overdo sports. Eventually you are confused with all this recommendation that comes out and we need to understand at, at the end it's individual. Each one of us has its genetic, has its life ha habits. We need to find what are the different things we are doing every day that affects positively our, our brain and which one of them affects negatively. For that, you need a large database, a large database of subjects that are scanned in the MRI when you also know their life habits and you can understand what causes, what causes, for example, the MRI indices, brain volume, or uh, whatever, which I show in a minute, what causes the, 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 the indices or brain volume to reduce through age, and how we can, we can uh, understand what causes a brain that, that deteriorates poorly at old age, if we can predict it at, at younger age, and maybe then change the life habit, or, or find what are the life habits that, that, that will benefit that subject. Um, let me skip that. So the one thing that we are working on and, and we think is, is, uh, may help us to do so is the brain connectome. And what is the connectome here? So in neuroscience, everything that we want to do, no matter at what level you investigate the brain, is to understand the relation between the organ itself and the function and behavior at the, hand, at, at the end. So the brain on a very general level is, is composed of gray matter, white matter. On the, on the bottoms there is the genetics different kinds of molecules, chemicals, organelles of that kind, different kinds of cells. But in between them, in between them, we have the connectome. And the connectome is, is the mass array of all connections that forms the dense network uh, between all components of the nervous system. It spans along, along many directions. You may think of the connectome of a single cell, of a single column in the brain or, or region, and eventually the entire organ itself. It's a graph. It's a graph that shows you what is the blueprint of the brain who connects to what region. And, and we do know today that the connectome may help us explain variability in cognition and behavior. And some would say that as genes encode our body, then the connectome encodes our mind in a way. 
So connectome research, again, is not new. It was done in the C. elegans many years ago, and it was mapped uh, through electron microscopy, all the connection between the 300 and two neurons of the C. elegans. When you move up in the evolutionary uh, tree and you go, for example, for the Drosophila, 25,000 neurons, which were already, uh, was also mapped and published a while ago. Uh, but when you scale up, to, for example, for mammals, for, for the mouse brain, we have 70 million neurons. So obviously that is a significant problem in order to create it. And it was, it was mapped, it was sliced and mapped, but no, nobody can access the data because it's, uh, I don't know, peta, peta, petabytes of data that nobody can access at the end in one computer. And obviously when you go to the human brain, which is we want to understand the aging of the human brain, 100 billion neurons is, is, a, is a difficult task. For that purpose, we are using MRI. So MRI is a very, uh, very versatile method. You can have a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of indices comes out of it. And specifically, we are using uh, diffusion MRI. Diffu diffusion MRI, as, as it stands, it measures the motion of water molecules. So you can see the mo moves along in, in, in cell body and in, in, the, in the connection in the, ar in the axon, for example. And eventually we can model that, that motion if we measure it. For example, here you see uh, when I catch several uh, water molecules and just follow them, follow them to create a connection in the brain. And, 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 and doing so without going into the methodology itself, I can recreate the, the wiring pattern, although not on a neuronal level, not on the cell level, but on the regional level, I can create what is the connectivity pattern or what is the connectome of that subject. In order to quantify uh, parameters of the connectome, uh, we are using uh, graph theory indices. So graph theory was developed a long time ago by Euler here, uh, which tried to solve a problem of crossing some bridges in its, in its, in its uh, city of uh, Konigsberg in Prussia. Uh, but through that theory, we are using it in order to understand how the brain wires or what is this connectome pattern. So we take the brain, we create for me the connectivity matrix, as you can see here, uh, which is, uh, you can see the left hemisphere. I hope you can see. This is the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere, and the interconnections between them. Uh, each pixel in that, in that matrix is a region in the brain, and you can see to which other region it is connected. From that, we can extract many kinds of indices. For example, which areas in the brain are the, are the hubs? So which means that they have as many connections to many other regions. So they are like a, a center of information processing or information transfer. And what you can see here, so the loud, large, the loud sphere, so I don't know where the mouse is, but the loud sphere over here, <laughs> represent areas which are the central hubs of the brain. Most of them are in the, in the medial surface of the brain in, a, in an area called the cingulate cortex and the other are in the, in the bottom medial area which involves the hippocampus and other subcortical regions uh, which you may think the hippocampus which is the flow of, in, of, of memories in our brain which is the first affected in aging and in Alzheimer's disease um, uh, is a central hub of the brain of, of information transfer. And it's not only that, because if we look at, at uh, I don't know where the mouse, ah, here it is. If we look uh, on the left-hand uh, image where you see the, 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 the hubs are, 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 are colored by their, uh, their centrality or their, their importance in the brain, the red one are the most important. And if you look on the right, which is a PET image of amyloid deposition, you can see that where you have increased deposition of amyloid, which is a significant significantly accumulating factor in aging and in Alzheimer's disease, those are, are almost uh, uh, identical to the areas of, of hubs in the brain. Because the hubs in the brain uh, consume a lot of energy, a lot of glucose, it is trivial or, or you may expect that those will be also the area of amyloid deposition. But if we, we will try to, uh, we can't do a PET mapping of amyloid to the whole population, but MRI is more accessible in that sense. But if we can follow the connectivity pattern and the connectome, maybe we could say something about that. Uh, so in our project is to creating a brain bank which will be accessible to everyone. Uh, who wants to work on it, of, of human subject that will be scanned in the MRI. So far, we were lucky enough uh, to scan 400 subjects. Most of them are not very old, are students in the university around the age of 30 or 20-something. Uh, it was very, very difficult to scan subject, old subjects at the time of the corona. They just were too afraid to come to the university to be scanned. Now it's, be it's becoming more 
uh, more easily done. And I invite all of you who want to be scanned uh, to our database, you are more than welcome to join us. The MRI is just across the street in the biotechnology building in the university. Uh, so we have about 10 a week that are, that are scanned and, and still we have a lot of data to work on. What we were able to do, to do with our analysis, so you see a Manhattan plot of the relation in each brain area, a Manhattan of the correlation between the connectivity, the connectivity indices that we extract from, from the, the, the fiber tracks that I showed you before and the graph analysis, the correlation between that and age over the population. And in this Manhattan plot, so you can see here the different uh, areas of the brain. Each column is a sub-area, which I didn't write because it was just too much information. And uh, the first uh, line represent the FDR correction for the multiple comparisons. So anything about, above it is most likely to be highly significant in relation to age. And what you see, so the, the degree, the, the node degree, the, the area degree, which means how strongly it's connected to other area. It's like these are the halves of the brain. So the subcortical nuclei or the area of the hippocampus and surrounding that, the basal ganglia, et cetera, are the most strongly affected by aging over the population. And if we found that kind of correlation, we may use that as a biomarker or as a predictor to see which age at younger subject is most likely to age better or age uh, and worse. And there are many other facts though, that, that we can explore without going into that, to that. This is a very initial stage of, of, of this project. We can use other factors of, of the connectome and see different patterns of connectivity that are affected and try to infer by that what is the process of connectivity changes in the brain that is affected by aging. Because at the end, the brain is a connectivity machine. It could be a very good neuron that is suited somewhere in the brain, but if it's not connected to a target neuron or a target organ, it won't do anything. So it's all about the connectivity in the brain. Lastly, we also try to do some prediction modeling. In that prediction modeling, we try to take the connectome of, of, of subject to learn what is the relation between the connectome, your, your connectome indices and your age and use that on, on another cohort of subject and see if we can use the brain in order to predict what the real, the real uh, age will be. So the best, this is an, on the x-axis is the age, the real age, and on the y-axis is the predicted age by the model of the connectome uh, indices. And you can see that there is very high correlation, not so many old subject, but still there are many high correlation, but also some variability. And now we are trying to understand what is the source of this variability. Would it mean that these subjects are predicted to be at higher age than they are, which means that their brain is, ac is uh, aging ac in an accelerated manner compared to the average mean and others that are more preserved. So this is something that, uh, that we need to learn. As I said, it's just the beginning of the project. I'm just finishing. It's just the beginning of the project. Hopefully next year or in the next uh, conference, I have much more to say. Finally, I just want to thank Professor Heidi Johansenberg for, uh, for the collaboration with the cooperation over this project, Gal Bensvi and Umri Tomer that, that uh, performed some of the analysis um, uh, on this project and the other students in the lab, and thank you.